At the front, this soldier is fighting against his compatriots. Kandalaksha, a pseudonym, is the Russian commander of a Ukrainian paratrooper platoon. The way I see it, the Kremlin is a universal evil. Everybody must fight against it. This is the field. Two days ago it was all clear and now they've burned part of it. They're searching. They don't yet have their bearings here, so they're looking for our positions. They're groping around, trying to reach us. The commander started out as an opponent of Vladimir Putin in Russia, then chose to fight for Ukraine in 2015. I see this regime as a tumor metastasizing across the body of our planet. If you take a look at any conflict on Earth, always keep an eye out for the hand of the Kremlin. In Russia, I fought against Putin's regime as much as I could. I participated in actions. I spread information about the crimes of Putin's regime. Then I understood that the front line in the fight against the Kremlin was in Ukraine. So I left for Ukraine. His unit digs in tirelessly to the permanent background sound of artillery. They have to go to ground if they want to survive this style of static warfare. Rotation in the frontline trench facing the Russian troops lasts three days. The soldiers call it position zero. It's hard on the nerves. It's a really difficult challenge. You wonder if you're going to be up to whatever situation you face, whether it's being bombed or carrying someone wounded or dead or being shot at. The first time I was thinking that I hadn't dug down enough, that I had to dig deeper and protect my head, get my shoulders in. I thought, my God, I haven't lived enough, I've done nothing with my life, and then it passed, and I calmed down. There was no panic, nothing like that. The first seriously wounded soldier of the day for the 25th Airborne Brigade. The medics need to stabilize this soldier as fast as possible. His platoon leader is at his side. It happened around 10 a.m. My troops say the enemy fired a mortar first, then corrected their aim and a tank started firing from a camouflage position. A shell hit his legs and he took shrapnel in his lower legs. We were under fire from midnight and it lasted 21 hours. It's been like that for four days. Enemy fire for 21 hours out of 24. The enemy wants to storm our positions and go on the offensive. The lightly wounded are returned to combat almost immediately. But other shell-shocked soldiers are in no condition to go back to the front. We had two dead. Not on the spot. One died on the way. Our brigade speciality is to clear towns, not sit in a trench. In Donbass, the trenches are often protected by forest. Almost undetectable in the vegetation, two snipers, Soap and Price, are keeping a lookout. 
We got intelligence that there's a group of saboteurs in the area. We've been ordered to advance to this forest area and just keep watch. It's a routine mission for this double team. Others can be riskier, like the day when they were sent behind enemy lines near to the Russian-held city of Donetsk. A month ago, we had to enter a temporarily occupied village. It was night. We walked around for two days among the Russians. When Russian troops came through the village, we would shoot at them from our positions, then move on to another. We had enough ammunition. They got really tired of their men dying but not knowing where it was coming from. They controlled the village, but their men were dying anyway. I liked seeing them panic from the first day. That day we killed three of them. We saw them taking beds and stealing cars. They were looting the whole village. We killed three of them while they were looting. They responded very quickly with artillery, trying to get us in any way they could, without even caring where their men were. Then some stupid snipers came in and used their outdated rifles to shoot out all the windows. No common sense. We watched it all, we moved, and it made us smile. At night and under a total blackout, a section of the 95th Airborne Brigade is preparing to move to position zero, the frontline trench facing the Russians. One soldier is preparing the grenades to be used if Russian troops storm the trench. Yeah. Unit sniper Oksana and commander Bogdan are concentrating on organizing the rotation. Russia is now throwing all its available resources into battle. We're fighting for every meter, every single meter. You have to understand that in Russian logic, they cannot withdraw without making any gains. Except that the Ukrainian people will not accept surrender. This is now, in the main sense of the word, our Ukrainian patriotic war. And that's why it will last a long time. It's time for Oksana and Bogdan to lead the section to the front. These men will have to hold their positions under fire for 72 hours. <laughs> a daunting task, but nobody here wants to talk about a truce, let alone negotiations. If some of those in Europe think that Ukrainian territory must be given up, I suggest that they start by offering Russia some of their own territory first to show their goodwill. Let's be clear, we will not give up our land. If someone thinks like that, they are either a complete idiot or an agent under Russian influence. In the early morning, soldiers who were relieved during the night returned to position zero. Fatigue has not affected their sense of humor. As soon as their weapons are stored, the section debriefs Bogdan, the commander. The tanks advanced in our direction on the field. They passed on both sides of the terrain to launch their infantry. When one of the tanks started to fire, it was hit by a mine. All their plans were ruined. What would have happened if it had got through? We would have been done for. They would have taken over the area, just like that. Huh. We killed one of their scouts, too. We killed him at close range. 
This scout was crawling across the damn field. The guys were digging trenches. He showed up. One of our guys asked, who are you? No, where are you from? The guy said, I'm from Russia. And they shot him. You should have given him a rough interrogation and shot him afterwards. No, it was smarter to do it that way. Stanislav and Oksana are a couple. They met on Maidan Square in 2014 in Kiev, demonstrating for a free and Europe-oriented Ukraine. We went through Maidan together. Oksana was wounded on the square and so was I. Then, when the war started in 2014, I volunteered to fight. And since then, we've been going through it together. When this big Russian attack came closer, we made a decision to stay together. It's a great honor to fight a war for the beautiful country that is Ukraine. I am now proud that people can live peacefully in Kyiv, under a peaceful sky, thanks to all of those here at the front. It's crazy. I remember 2014 so well, the excitement when former pro-Russian President Yanukovych ran away. We'd won. We were going to become European. No more corruption, no more torture from police, and... Well, here we are. Everything just got worse. Yaroslav also demonstrated on Maidan Square eight years ago. He's now an artillery officer. He and Stepan, his partner, are approaching enemy lines to place their grads, multiple rocket launchers. We're moving to a new position. We need to understand where the enemy is in relation to us, where the interesting targets are, their weaponry. We have to understand a lot of things to be able to hit them. So we're going out there to get that information so we can understand. Several columns of smoke rise above the road. The Russians are targeting the area. Before the order to open fire, Yaroslav and his artillery never stay in the same place. The order is given nine hours later. The grads are placed in a clearing in a place calculated by Yaroslav the day before. A duel between each side's artillery is then played out here in the Donbass countryside. It's routine, but I'm a bit nervous. When you change positions, there's always something new. A position can become a target. Yaroslav needs to correct his aim when the enemy's artillery can be heard. The target is hit after three rocket salves. And the grads leave the area to avoid the Russian reply. Yaroslav and his unit then move to another position elsewhere on the front. These maneuvers only serve one purpose for the commander. Les Podrivansky. Les Podrivansky summed up the national idea of Ukraine, which is, leave us alone. Ukrainians are people who place freedom above all else. If Ukrainians want to live in the dirt, we have the right to. If we want to join the European Union, we have the right to choose that as well. That's freedom, giving us the possibility to choose what we want. That's what we're fighting for. For all of those serving on the front line, it means, before anything else, winning their country's independence once and for all. <laughs>